Hi, this is Debbie, and we're going to go into Practice Fusion and look at patients right now. So I've opened up Internet Explorer, and I go to the address line, and I type in Practice, whoops, I can't spell, PracticeFusion.com. And it opens up the splash screen. We go to Login and left click on it and it opens up the login screen. So while that's loading we're going to go to the rectangle and maximize it. And then we go and log in. So please note, if you want to practice yourself, here is the practice ID, Debbie Clinging S5. The username will be perfect joy and the password will be the perfect joy password that you already know. So I'm going to log in as me and it takes about 30 seconds to log in because we're talking to a computer in San Francisco. Off we go and we end up in the patient screen. So these are all fake patients Actually, they're mostly birds and cats and dogs that belong to friends. So let's take a look at this screen while we're here. There are tabs across the top. Home, Schedule, Charts, ERX is e-prescribing, Messages, Labs, Documents, Reports, and Setup. For now, we're going to take a quick look at home. So this is basically a fax result page and we're going to take a look at charts. Of interest to us in the long run will be schedule, charts, messages, and documents. But we're going to start with charts because you can't schedule anyone an appointment until you've created a chart for them. So this is the main patient screen and if I click on a patient's name it opens up a detailed chart. Notice what happened. Patients, I would click on that to get to the list, and now I've opened up my own record. If I want to see the patient list again, I could click on Patients, and I could open up another. And the name of that person appears across the top. And I could do this up to five people's worth. Lilu Clinging Smith, my kitty cat. So Lilu's name is there. I go back to patients again and I pick. Whoops, open up. I'm picking Maggie Wood, who isn't opening up. There we go. So McGee is up here now. I click on patients and I'll hit five. Bird Navarro. Antoinette's bird. Now I've hit five and we go back to patient. So watch what happens when I try to open up a sixth person. A message pops up and it says only five patients can be open at the same time. Please close one of the open tabs before proceeding. So we're going to close those. To close it, you go to the tab and hover over the X which will highlight and then click. Go to the next one hover over the X, left click. So I'm going to go to the X, left click, go to the X, left click, go to the X, left click. So we have this list of patients and it's by access time and date. So the most recently accessed person was Bird Navarro, followed by Maggie Wood, followed by Lulu Clinging Smith, followed by Jessica Testchild. So this, as it comes up in a default mode, this is in order of last access. If I want to change the order, I can resort this. So I'll click, I'm going to hover over last name and left click, and it alphabetizes it Z to A. If I left click again, so I'm going to left click on last name, it's now alphabetized a to Z. Same thing with first name. If I le left click on first name, it alphabetizes Z to A. 
left click again, A to Z. So you can do this with several of the columns. Gender will sort, date of birth will sort, patient record will sort, address will sort. So that's how you would put things in a different order. For example, how useful is it? If I'm looking for all the women over 40 who would be eligible for a mammogram, I would probably want to sort by date of birth and then look for a cutoff date of, what would that be, 40 years old from 2012, 1962. So notice we have 1953, I'm in here twice, and John Doe, John doesn't count, he's a guy. So it looks I'm like I would be the only eligible person over 40 for a mammogram. Let's go to the left column. And in the left column, there are sort filters. So if I start putting letters in, it starts filtering out by those letters. So if I put in a D, only the people whose first name begins with a D shows up. Let's try it with a B. So we have two patients whose first name starts with a B, Bird and Busy. You can do the same by last name. As you start typing, I'll put a D. So we have Jane and John Doe and Louie Dyer and Dizzy Don't Schedule. So if I put in O, that's a further filter and only DOs appear. DOE, and we end up with John and Jane Doe. You can also do combinations of names. So I could put a J here and a D here, and that would show us just the two people who have first initials of J and D. You could also sort by date of birth. So let's pick a date of birth. So let's put, if you don't have a name, or if somebody's name is different, you can always try the birth date. So I put 1-22-1964 in, and Jane Doe pops up. You can also put in a record number. So uh, let's see, let's put in a, a D. So all the patients whose record number begins with a D come up. I could put in a B. All the patients whose record numbers begin with a B show up. So you can use these filters to, to narrow your selection. And if I want to get rid of all the filters, I can click on Clear Filter. Down here, too, it shows how many active patients we have. If you want to see inactive patients, you click on this button. And let me go show you what an inactive patient looks like. So we're going to open up one of my records. OK, we're open. And the demographics are in the basic. So we're going to hover over basic and left click. That opens up demographics. And I'm going to click on Edit so I can change them. So I'm in here twice. I don't need to be in here twice. So I am going to mark this record inactive. Notice there are no events here. And we'll talk about events in a bit. But you only want to mark someone inactive if, they, if you have two records. And if there are events, which are basically chart notes, you need to move those chart notes over to the other record before you delete and make inactive this patient. So I'm going to uncheck active patient and I'm going to save. And now if we go back to patients, notice I appear only once now. If I sh say show inactive, the inactive record shows up. So to clear it, I would click on clear filter. All the patients, whether active or inactive, show up. OK. Let's see here. We've been going for 10 minutes. We've got five more minutes before YouTube is going to cut us off. So let's take a quick look at one more thing, and that is filling in the demographics. So we have goldfish, 
who is a 45 year old male and we're going to click on basic because we want to make sure goldfish have we have the most current address phone number and demographics on goldfish so there's no email address for goldfish and we can add that so I click on the edit button which is toward the center on the top I could give goldfish his middle name so um, gold scale fish most of our patients do not have social security numbers notice what happens here if I click on email as the preferred method there's an asterisk so all of the red asterisks are required fields if I click on phone then there's an asterisk by the phone numbers you have to have one phone number I'm going to put a fake email address in here for goldfish because um, if we have an email practice fusion will send a 24-hour reminder to that email address before an appointment so each time a patient comes in we double check on the address the county and their phone number we double check to make sure all the demographics are here so goldfish is Hispanic primary language is Spanish and race is Caucasian so that's it for now and we're going to add a patient in our next video video. Thank you. I'm going to save this. And then as always, I'm going to log out of Practice Fusion. And yes, we want to log out. Thank you. Talk to you next time.